All right, guys, so I stumbled across this testimony in Congress that I think is worth sharing because it just shows you how ridiculous the woke revolutionaries have gotten in regards to their pushback against their radical agenda that even people who are non-white uh, don't want to get on board with. And that is important to point out as the person that we're going to be talking about in the uh, speech they gave in Congress is Miss Astra Namani who uh, is a Georgetown professor. I believe she uh, worked for the Wall Street Journal. And she has been opposed to some books that the leftists, the woke revolutionaries, have been pushing in school, particularly when it comes to critical race theory. Now, in response to her opposition, uh, she has been called a white supremacist. She has been smeared like every other parent who opposes the Democrats. Uh, they call them white supremacists regardless of whether or not they're, they're actually uh, white, okay? Or a supremacist when it comes to anything. So this woman who happens to be Indian, happens to also be an immigrant as well too, is going to set Congress straight and roast AOC in the squad uh, for the fact that the far left uh, has come out to her and smeared her as a white supremacist for simply opposing a book that pushes radical racial ideology on kids in school and i think that her testimony here was absolutely beautiful so without further ado let's go ahead and get into it so my name is astra namani i came to the united states at the age of four i was an immigrant to the great state of new jersey and i grew up in morgantown west virginia a mostly white state i was affirmed i was supported and I was able to grow up a girl who knew not a word of English when I arrived to become a reporter for the Wall Street Journal. Ain't that something? An immigrant, an Indian, who grew up in a state like West Virginia, right, which is mostly white, and was still able to go on and achieve the American dream, right, to work at a, 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 a company like the Wall Street Journal? I'm just saying, the woke revolutionaries claim that this doesn't happen, right, that people can't do this. It's almost as if, you know, maybe, just maybe, it has more to do with your work ethic and your family background culture than it has to do with, you know, skin color and race in regards to whether or not you can succeed in this country. I am sitting here before you today, apparently the face of white supremacy. I am wearing a shirt that my father made. My father survived literally white supremacy in India. My father is five foot three because when he was a boy, the white supremacists that were the British rule in India literally funneled food away from the people of India and my father starved. And so he grew up to be a young man who came to the United States of America because he believed in the values and principles of this great nation. My father made this shirt for me, inspired by the gown that Representative Ocasio-Cortez wore to the Met Gala. And it says on here the names that we, the parents in the United States of America, have been called, including in the video that you featured, Chairman Raskin. Things like domestic terrorist, white supremacist, QAnon moms. What is it that we, the parents, have dared to stand up against? In well, I mean, you, you dare to stand up against the Democrat agenda, which is very clear what the Democrat agenda is. I mean, look at Biden. Look at what this man was saying in the White House during his the signing of the Marriage Destruction Act, right? I mean, he basically was saying straight up, no, we're totally fine with, you know, drag queens talking to kids in school. We're totally fine with teachers talking to kids about sex in school. Uh, we're totally fine with the most radical portions of the woke leftist agenda. We're 100% on board with it, right? This is why when you say the Democrat Party is woke, um, that's, not a, that's not a smear. That's not a dog whistle. That's just a fact. They are on board with the far left social progressive agenda. Therefore, the Democrat Party is a progressively social party, okay? They're woke. And if you stand up to, to wokeness, regardless of whether or not you're a so-called person of color, you're a white supremacist. I mean, they said that about the Muslims who stood up against their agenda in Dearborn, right? They smeared those parents as well, too, which, again, tells you what this is all about. It's not about white supremacy. It's, it's about the Democrat 
agenda. And if you get in the way of the Democrat agenda, you're a white supremacist. Okay, and, and this only works for uneducated so-called people of color uh, who simply are not able to think for themselves. In the United States of America over the last couple years, it is a divisive ideology expressed through this book called Critical Race Theory. It is a book that is taught in law schools, but it is translated into our school systems with books like this, Not My Idea, a book about whiteness. The trickle-down effect of the demonization of any human being because of their race is books like this. Ding, 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 ding. See, and this is why the woke revolutionaries, they're so disingenuous when they talk about you people on the right are complaining about critical race theory. Critical race theory is not being taught in schools. Okay, fine. Yes, the graduate school course of critical race theory is not being taught in schools. Yes, you're right. But it is the trickle down effect of it that is trickling into schools in the form of these books that are taught to indoctrinate kids into radical racial ideology i mean that, that is a fact that is what's happening so they, they want to divert away from the conversation by trying to focus on a technicality in regards to whether or not the graduate school course of critical race theory is actually being taught in schools which is not instead of focusing on the main idea which is that people are upset that radical racial propaganda has infiltrated these schools which we know is a fact we know it's a fact just like radical gender theory has infiltrated the schools. Now, Democrats don't flat out deny that. They just say that if you're opposed to it, then you're homophobic, right? You're a bigot, you're transphobic, whatever. Okay, that, that, that's kind of just how it goes. Where does this book take us as an idea? It takes us to this very simple idea. An idea that is a new hierarchy of human value. There is no doubt that the hierarchy of human value that was about white supremacy is illegitimate. Every single person is opposed to the idea of white supremacy. But we cannot replace an old hierarchy of human value with a new hierarchy of human value that demonizes children with this book, Whiteness is a Bad Deal, Signing a Contract with the Devil. What is the message in this? The message is the shaming of human beings. No child should be shamed. And why is this a threat to our democracy? Because we then have posters like this one in the Los Angeles School District. What does it say? F America with KKK replacing the C. Because the idea is that our nation has become a white supremacist nation. And that is not true. That is not the reality. And we can see exhibited here today this poster also, F the police. This is an ideology that I call the woke army. It is an ideology of activists who are going through America's school districts and our communities. And what they are doing is a threat to democracy. What is the greatest threat that our children face today? It is the learning loss that has happened in our school districts. The Department of Justice declares clearly the characteristics that lead any human being to extremism include having less education. Yeah, I mean, that's, <laughs> that's a part of why the Democrats are not concerned about kids and their educational achievement because they don't want to be educated, right? They want to be stupid and dumb so that they can be woke activists and remain dependent on the government, which means remaining dependent on the Democrat Party. It's all a part of the plan, right? They don't care at all about whether or not kids can do basic reading and writing. What they really care about is whether or not kids can protest. Can you read enough to protest? Can you write enough to protest, <laughs> right? That's all they really care about. But again, what she's saying here about how they are replacing one idea of human value and hierarchy with another one is so true, right? What they claim that they're so afraid of is that, okay, a white supremacy. Uh, they're replacing that with woke supremacy. Woke supremacy, which demonizes people, children, based off the color of their skin. Something that um, they uh, were born with. They don't have any control over. But because, hey, you're white, and this is a white supremacist country, which, by the way, it's, it's not. If it was a white supremacist country, 
uh, whoever's leading the charge to make this a white supremacist country is doing a terrible job, right? Doing a very terrible job. But they're basically, again, telling these children that, hey, you're a bad person, right? Because you're white and you have to answer for these sins of your ancestors. And that is very toxic messaging that she's right. It is a threat to democracy or a threat to our republic, right? That's what Republicans like to say. Republicans like to say threat to uh, our republic. Uh, Democrats like to say threat to our democracy, even though <laughs> they're basically kind of the same thing, right? They're very related. But regardless, uh, it, it is a threat to our country a, as a whole, right? It, it, it is a threat to our country. It really is. Chairman Raskin, I don't know if you know it, but the reading level in your school district, in Montgomery County Schools, is at 32% of kids that are reading at, at grade level. Math is at 30%. Congressman, Congresswoman Talib is here. In Detroit, it's 18% and then 12% for math. It is a failure. This is a system failure. Facts. And do you think they care? No. <laughs> do they ever go in Congress and talk about how kids in their school districts can't even read or write or do math? Nope. They'll never talk about it. But they go up here every single day and talk about so-called white supremacy. Again, while kids, a lot of whom are so-called students of color, can't even do basic reading, writing, and math. It's a shame. It, it really is. But they don't care. They don't give a damn because that's what they want. They want kids dumb and stupid. <laughs> that's the only way to keep getting them to vote Democrat. White supremacy must be defeated, as must all extremism. This is our mandate as adults for our children. Our children are in a crisis today, and the idea that we, the parents, are now the agents of white supremacy is unacceptable. All of these books that I have here today are the indoctrination that are being put into the minds of our children instead of the fundamentals that are critical to make them educated, enlightened citizens that protect our democracy. That is our greatest mandate, and that is the one that I am honored to serve with you to realize for our children. Thank you so much. Yeah, um, that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. She was 100% on point, and I just love how she used the woke Democrats and their talking point about democracy against them. But most importantly, like she said, if you're going to be against white supremacy, right, which is really not a threat, okay, but it is a form of extremism, then you need to be against all forms of extremism. But apparently to the Democrats, uh, you know, if you're against the extremism coming from the progressive left, particularly when it comes to the agenda surrounding, you know, LGBTQ uh, in, in children, then you you are a bigot. You're you're a racist. You're you're homophobic. You're sexist. That can't be criticized. No criticism of, of the far left agenda. And again, that that really is a, a threat to our country. It is a threat to our nation. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.